Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Today I wanted to talk about the proposed mobility nerfs that Riot are talking about over on Twitter, and specifically the Stridebreaker nerfs that Riot are considering, which they specifically called out by name in the post. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, I will have it linked down in the description below. Of course, this is another Riot Scruffy post where he talks about ongoing work that Riot has and their plans going forward, and one of the biggest things in this post, alongside a couple other changes that I think will be quite nice, but I may talk about it at a later date, are are the fact that Riot are going to be taking a pass at systemic mobility. Now, if that sounds like a load of words that you don't know what they mean, it's basically a fancy way of saying that mobility that you can access via items, runes, or summoner spells, right? Sort of champion agnostic mobility, right? Any champion can have any, you know, a mobility spell or mobility rune or mobility item, right? So that's what they mean by systemic mobility. So presumably these changes are going to be looking at everything that gives items or mobility in the game. So things like Night Harvester, Rocket Belt, Gale Force, Predator, Nimbus Cloak, even the recent Phase Rush changes are probably a part of what Riot would consider to be the mobility nerfs. So you guys can all consider that to be on the table for the potential of getting looked at by Riot. Even things like Relentless Hunter could be getting looked at as Riot feel like the systemic mobility in the game is fairly high. Now, this is not the first time they've done this either. Um, we can think back to, I believe it was around Season 5, Season 6-ish, where Tier 3 boots were a thing, and Riot eventually did remove them because they felt that, across the board, mobility was too high in League of Legends. And again, specifically, this systemic mobility was too high. So... In general, I do feel like this is, you know, this so this is not anything out of the ordinary, but the biggest thing are a lot of people talking about the Stridebreaker nerfs, and essentially saying, okay, why are, why is this specifically getting called out, why is this specifically a problem, especially given that it's one of the best items in business for a lot of top lane fighters that otherwise feel pretty bad without it. The biggest disadvantage of some of these top lane fighters is that they don't have mobility. Stridebreaker was a great alternative for them, and it feels pretty bad that they are getting nerfed down, but I did want to talk a little bit about why the these changes are actually a good thing for the game as a whole, and why I don't feel like it's that big of a deal for a lot of champions that are getting their item nerfed, essentially. So, the biggest thing here is that while, yes, Stridebreaker goes a long way towards fixing the weaknesses of some of these champions, specifically in regards to their mobility, that's sort of the point, and that's sort of a good thing. Essentially, the biggest thing here is that champions are all supposed to have intended weaknesses, right? They are places where they're supposed to be strong, and there are places that they're supposed to be weakened, right? A champion, for example, like Darius, is always intended to be weak in terms of his mobility. He's allowed to have damage, he's allowed to have durability, he's allowed to have some degree of utility with things like his pull and his slow, but at the end of the day, he gets all of this because he's one of the least mobile champions in the game. He does not have mobility anywhere in his kit, and so... Getting in is the hard part for Darius, but once he gets in, he's able to do a lot of good things with it, right? So the fact that you're able to buy an item to completely remove one of these disadvantages or to severely remove or to severely uh, weaken this disadvantage, right? Like that's a big deal. That's something that really makes the champion go from being playable but can be difficult to work with in some situations due to how weak it can be into oh my god this champion is incredibly oppressive and very powerful right so in that regard it definitely makes sense that stridebreaker should get nerfed in that regard because it is one of those items that does nerf or it does remove the counterplay or the intended weaknesses of some of these champions, right? And it's not only that Stridebreaker just has a dash involved, as it's a small dash. Stridebreaker removes the, or is, enables mobility in three separate ways. There's a small dash, of course, which allows champions to get in or close that little bit of extra gap that ordinarily they wouldn't be able to. It has an AoE slow, which is a pretty hefty slow, and a pretty large AoE as well, which really does mean that the champion is allowed to even if you don't dash directly on top of them, you're able to get a beefy slow off and then run the rest of the distance down. And speaking of running the rest of the distance down, it gives movement speed per legendary item you complete afterwards, which, yeah, movement speed doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but especially once you have a couple of items built up, it can really stack up. And again, the less mobility the champion has in the first place, the more valuable mobility becomes on them as a whole. Ezreal almost doesn't need Flash to a certain extent because of how low the cooldown our, our Arcane Shift is, and because he always has that ability available to him. Flash is sort of a extra special last ditch, I have to get out of this card, but he doesn't fundamentally need it, whereas for Darius, his flash cooldown is way more important than another champion because of the fact that he doesn't have mobility by default, right? So, in that regard, because Stridebreaker addresses 
and addresses the mobility problem in three separate ways, it ends up being very efficient at removing mobility or lack thereof as a weakness on these champions, which is a problem because a champion with no weaknesses ends up being too strong. And this ends up being a problem for everyone who even plays the champion, not just for the people who play against it, because if a champion ends up being too strong because they have no intended weaknesses, then they're going to be frequent visitors to the patch notes in regards to getting nerfed down. And it also means that they will rarely get played because everyone will be banning them because, hey, they're too strong and we don't want to see that champion in our games. And now, for everyone who's saying right now, you know, well, what about other mobility items? Rocket Belt and Gale Force also give dashes, and those aren't seen as this big problem. They're not getting called out by name in this post. But the biggest thing I have with those items is that they are not for a class whose intended weakness as a rule is lack of mobility, right? Juggernauts, as a rule, are immobile. That's the bears. Every single one of them is intended to be a very extremely kiteable champion. Every single one. I can't think of a single juggernaut where it's sort of like, okay, who cares if they have the ability to run me down or not, right? Like, or if they have, you know, extreme damage or not, they can't run me down. So, in that regard, the mages that are building Rocket Belt or the 80 carries that are building Gale Force, well, some of them will have mobility, but also some of them won't. So, Rocket Belt kind of makes sense as an item that the low mobility champions can opt into on that regard, right? Or the uh, low mobility 80 carries. They can opt into Gale Force if they decide they really want to sacrifice damage or survivability for additional mobility. But it also means that there are some champions that won't need it, right? There are some champions who can say, I don't need extra mobility, right? I already have a ton of dashes, what's one more? So in that regard, Stridebreaker does sort of exist in its own category as completely removing or otherwise severely negating a weakness that the class is intended to have. And let's be real, it's only Juggernauts that are building Stridebreaker. The divers that already have high mobility, like Vi, they're not building Stridebreaker. They don't care. They already have mobility, right? Extra mobility is not as valuable for those champions, so they don't have to opt into it. And now, essentially, so this is why the item needs to be nerfed down, but really, here's why the nerfs are going to end up being good for all the champions who are building the item. There's an old Season 6 or Season 7 meme about Sejuani, where you can refer to a champion being Sejuani'd, which is that um, Sejuani was hyper-synergistic with an item called Cinder Hulk, which she received nerfed after nerf after nerf for, because essentially the problem is she was just too good with this item, and so she got nerfed incredibly much because of this item to the point where everyone's like the problem is with the item right stop nerfing Sejuani and then she has to build Cinder Hulk even if she wanted other options because she's essentially been balanced around its existence and then when Riot inevitably nerfed Cinder Hulk Sejuani was completely left in the gutter because the only thing propping her up was the power of Cinder Hulk and once that got nerfed well the rest of her base kit had been nerfed so hard to compensate for it that now now that it was no longer a thing she barely was worth playing anymore so in that regard, that's a really feels bad situation to be in. When you see your champion get nerfed because of the power of an item that other champions can buy and still use, it's just yours is the best in class with it. And then when that item inevitably gets nerfed, your champion gets left in the lurch. In that regard, we already have some champions that are sorting, sort of starting to see this. We have a couple of champions who are building Stridebreaker in greater than 75% of their games, which is already breaking Riot sort of warning barriers for how much people are building specific uh, mythics. But it also means that these champions are starting to be balanced around the presence of this item. One can even think about the nerfs that Garen and Darius have both received. They're both on that Stridebreaker list. And they're receiving these nerfs specifically because of the power of Stridebreaker and because of the efficiency at which it addresses their major balance issues and their major flaws that these champions have, right? So in that regard, it's already starting to happen to these champions. So unless Stridebreaker gets nerfed and nerfed soon, these champions will eventually have the potential to get Sejuani because they'll be nerfed so hard to compensate for Stridebreaker's existence that essentially they won't be able to function without it. And then when it does get nerfed, they'll be left in the lurch the same as Sejuani did back in the day. So this item getting nerfed, therefore, is not only going to prevent the scenario, but because if Riot do nerf down Stridebreaker, then it means that they can put power back into base kits. They've already talked about doing a champion balance pass after they do this mobility pass to make sure that champions that were dependent on the mobility are in a better spot overall. And having your champion have more power in their base kit as opposed to systemic 
is, I think, a much better place for the game. It feels really bad when a champion of yours is getting nerfed down because of a particular build or a particular rune setup that ends up being super, super good on them, and it feels really bad then when your champion, is your champion by default, is getting nerfed. Even if you're not building that build, even if you can't make that particular playstyle work, your champion gets nerfed, that feels pretty bad. So, right, being able to put power back into the base champion kit actually feels much better because then it's sort of like, no matter how you play the champion, you're going to feel much better about playing the champion in the first place. It also means that Stridebreaker getting nerfed down means that they can buff up other aspects of the item itself. For example, Stridebreaker didn't have a dash, but had a very strong AoE slow. It would still, I think, work to address the problems that the fighters had because it means that, let's say a Garen is able to sprint into the middle of the enemy team and get his first auto attack off, and then he can pop his Stridebreaker and dramatically slow everybody while he's spinning on top of them. That still does, goes a long way towards addressing Garen's issue with mobility. Or if Rai took the other approach and kept the dash but removed the AoE slow, then yeah, you don't have that sort of extra wiggle room to dash on them even if you don't land on top of them but you're still able to get that huge aoe slow if that got nerfed down then you still have it for the dash but you don't have that sort of extra wiggle room that makes it very forgiving for example so in that regard, while I do understand that, you know, these Stride Breaker in particular getting nerfed down, but some of these other items getting nerfed down as well is sort of a uh, cause for alarm and sort of a contentious change, I do think at the end of the day that it's going to end up being a good thing for the game going forward. But let me know what you guys think of all this down in the comments section below. If you really think Stride Breaker shouldn't get nerfed, let me know. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments, uh, or especially if you think it does, you know, let me know all of that. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Now I'll talk to you all later.